Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem path with minimum effort. We are on a two dimensional grid like this. We're starting at the top left position and our goal is to get to the bottom right position. But there is something we're trying to minimize on our way to this path to this position and it's a bit confusing. So let's take this path as an example. Anytime we move from one cell to another, like these two adjacent cells and then these two adjacent cells and then these two and then these two adjacent cells, Whenever we do that, we're going to calculate the absolute difference between the values in those positions. And in this problem, the context of this problem, those are called heights. So when you take the absolute difference of those, it's two. Now we're going to do that for every pair of adjacent cells. So for these, it was two for these. It's also two for these. It's two. And for these, it's also two. Now we're not going to accumulate all of them. We're not going to aggregate all of them among all of these values. One, two, three, four. We want to take the max of all of them. And in this case, it's two. So for this path, the maximum absolute difference in heights between two consecutive cells of the routes is two. And what we're trying to do is among all of the possible ways that there are to reach this position, we want to return the minimum effort required among all of the paths. And if we try doing it this way, it seems like from starting here, which choice would you rather make? Would you rather go to the three or would you rather go to the two? Well, if you're being greedy, you'd probably start with the two getting there. The, it took like an absolute difference of one. Then you'd move to the right or move down. Like these are our two choices kind of if we're running like a breadth first search, which is pretty natural when you're trying to minimize something or trying to get like the shortest path. If you're familiar with like just regular BFS when there's no uh, weights on the edges, that's kind of how you can find the shortest path. And when there are weights on the edges, you can use Dijkstra's algorithm. If you don't know what Dijkstra's algorithm is, it's going to be pretty hard to solve this problem, but you can kind of derive the logic and intuition. And a very, very quick shameless plug on Neatcode.io. I recently added a basics tab. Right now it has like nine data structures you can implement. I'm actually working on adding Dijkstra's or rather Dijkstra's algorithm as well as a bunch of others. They should be coming out in like the next couple days and I have a bunch of more ideas for like the types of things we can implement here. Okay, back to the problem. So going along that train of thought, our BFS, thinking about this in terms of choices that we can make, which choice do you think now would be better? Should we go here? Should we go here? And actually, there is the other choice of just going here. Well, if we go here, the difference is zero. So that seems minimum to me. The difference here is six. The difference here is two. So let's try going over here. OK, and I might as well blow this up a little bit. But now we also have three choices. We can go here, difference of two here, difference of six and here, difference of zero again. So, of course, we're going to want to take the minimum. The reason we're doing it this way is think about it, it along this path. Well, there's nothing really going on in that path, but so far along this path, the maximum absolute difference has been one. And that one came from this first step here. But if we were to go down here, the maximum absolute difference would be six. If we were to go down here, the maximum absolute difference would be two. Now, keep in mind that even though along this path, we're making jumps of zero. We still have to keep in mind that for us to get here, it did take an absolute difference of one here. So we have to remember that we're not accumulating all of these, but we have to remember the maximum among all of them. Now is when things get interesting from here. We can actually go to the left, but that's not going to be great. That's going to be a difference of six or we can go down. That's going to be a difference of three. Now, yeah, we're pretty close to the target, but we don't have to make a jump of three, at least not yet. Like maybe going down this path, we will find that, yeah, we'll have to make like a jump of three or more. But for now, going down here is actually only going to cost us two. So 
Let's try that out. Like we're just performing a BFS here with a little bit of prioritization. We're prioritizing based on the minimum uh, absolute difference. So now we have some more choices. We can go here, that's gonna be a difference of five. We can go down, that's a difference of two. So of course, let's go down. Even now, that's a smaller difference than here. So now we get here. Again, we have a choice to go right. That's again a difference of two. And then once again, we have two decisions. Well, we have more than two decisions, but these are like our two main decisions. Difference of three here, difference of two here. Of course, we're going to go with the smaller one. We're going to go from here. And along that entire path, we were keeping track of what the maximum was, and it happened to be two. So two is what we're going to return. That's the result for this problem. And if you didn't notice that what we did right now, this solution was a BFS with a bit of prioritization. You know, you could call it a priority queue or you could call it a min heap. But if this is not looking like a variation of Dijkstra's algorithm just yet, just wait until we get into the code. It's almost exactly like Dijkstra's. Overall, time complexity is just going to be the size of the graph because we are never going to visit the same node twice. So I think it's going to be n times m where those are the dimensions of the grid. And that's also going to be the space complexity because we are going to keep track of visited positions because we don't want to end up visiting the same position twice. So now let's code it up. Okay, so the first thing I like to do with 2D grid problems is just get the dimensions of the grid. We know we're going to need them eventually. Uh, maybe not too much in this problem, but we know that we're going to need them. So I just like to get them up front and we can do that pretty easily. Okay, it's called heights, not height. Don't want to make that mistake on the first line of code. But next, we're actually just going to initialize our min heap. Now, with a lot of problems, when you're given like a list of edges, you have to create an adjacency list from that. But this is a 2D grid, so we definitely don't need an adjacency list. We can just use the grid as our graph. But the min heap, remember, we want to prioritize. So we're going to add cells to this a min heap. And we're actually going to add three values. I'll start with the second two, the row and the column, of course. We're not going to actually add the height of a position because if we store the row and the column, we can get the height easily. We just, you know, get it from the heights grid. So we don't need to store that. You could if you want to, but that's not even what we're prioritizing, actually. Like the, the height itself is not what we're prioritizing. We're prioritizing the difference, the maximum absolute difference. I'm just writing diff for short, but that's what we're uh, starting with. Now, remember, when we're doing this BFS, we're starting at the top left position, aka zero, zero. But what's the maximum absolute difference of that position? I mean, there's not like two adjacent cells, so we can put a default value here of zero. We don't, we're not really taking the difference with anything. So as a default value, we start at a difference of zero for this position. It doesn't cost us anything to get to this position. It's the starting position. So now when we uh, start our uh, BFS, we're going to say while the min heap is non-empty. And in this problem, actually, we're guaranteed to be able to reach the bottom right cell. So we're not even going to put a return statement out here. We're going to keep our return statement in here. Every iteration, we're going to say heap Q dot heap pop, pop from the min heap and get those three values, get the diff, get the row and get the column. Now, what if this position is already visited? How do we know that? Well, I'm going to check. Is this row column in our visit hash set, which we haven't even declared yet? So better declare that. I already knew we should. But when you're in a real interview, you're kind of nervous. You're just going through things. You might not remember that, but by the time you get to this part of the code, you should. And so here we're going to declare a hash set and then we're going to continue to the next iteration of the loop if we've already visited a cell. Now, if it's not been visited, let's go ahead and add it to visit because we don't want to visit it multiple times. Make sure that you add it as visited after we pop it from the min heap, not when we push it, because it's actually possible to push the same coordinate multiple times to the min heap. Before we start continuing the BFS, what if the coordinate we popped was actually the target, right? Like we're trying to get to the bottom right position. The first time we get there, we're going to guarantee that that took the minimum effort. And that's because this is like a greedy BFS. And you'll see why that's guaranteed to be the case when we write the rest of the code. But for now, I'll just say if this pair is equal to 
uh, rows minus one and columns minus one. You could also do double comparisons. Like, is this equal to this? And is this equal to this? But it's just a bit easier in Python. Now, if that's the case, what are we gonna do? We're gonna return the difference that we popped. And this difference is going to be the max difference it took to reach this coordinate. So let's keep that in mind. Now, when we start doing the BFS portion, when we go through every neighbor of the current row column position, how do you do that in a two dimensional grid? Well, the easiest technique is to declare a array like this. This is not something I came up with, by the way, it's something I learned, but basically the four directions are zero, one and zero, negative one, one, zero, and negative one, zero. When we say these are the directions, these are kind of the differences. Like if I took this and added it to the row column, I would increment the column by one. If I took this and added it to this pair, I would decrement the column by one. If I added this, I'd increment the row. If I added this, I'd decrement the row. So all four adjacent directions. So now here, we are going to iterate through that. We're gonna say dr, dc, in, directions and I'm going to create some variables, the new row or the neighbor row and the new column is gonna be the current row plus the difference and the current column plus the difference. Now, what if this new row or new column is out of bounds? How do we know if it's out of bounds? Well, we check new row is less than zero or new column is less than zero or new row is equal to rows. That means it's too large or the new column is equal to the number of columns. You could also say uh, greater than or equal, but you don't really need to because it would only be equal to this. It's not going to go like out of bounds by two. And that's because when we move in directions, we're only moving by one anyway. That takes care of the out of bounds condition. But what if this neighbor has already been visited? Should we add that to the min heap for us to continue the BFS? Probably not. So we can also say, or if this pair, new row, new column is in the visit hash set, then just continue to the next iteration of the loop. At least that's the way I like to write it because now the rest of our code doesn't have to go in like another nested block. I try to minimize the amount of like nesting that we're doing. Okay, but now we're finally ready. We're gonna say heap q dot heap push this new or to the min heap, this new pair, which is going to be, uh, the coordinate is gonna be new row, new column, but what are we gonna put over here? What's the difference that we put? Do we take the height of the current row column and subtract it from, and by the way, this is called heights, let's not make that mistake, uh, and subtract it from the heights of new row and new column? Yeah, that's a part of it. This tells us the difference between the neighbor position and the starting position, not the starting position, but the current position, like these are the two adjacent spots. And this tells us the difference. And of course we want the absolute value. So let's wrap that in an absolute value. But remember, we want to put the maximum absolute difference here. So it's possible that this new difference that we're calculating is the maximum absolute difference, but it's possible it's not. How would we know if this is not the maximum absolute difference? Well, we also have theoretically this diff. This diff tells us the maximum absolute difference it took to get here. At least that's what we're assuming. So to make that actually true, what we can say is the uh, new diff here is gonna be the max of what we just calculated and also the original diff that we popped from the min heap. So this basically tells us if maybe an older difference was actually greater than the current difference. We want whatever is the maximum of these two. And that new diff is what we're going to actually add to the min heap right here. And believe it or not, that's the entire code. We don't need a return statement out here because we're guaranteed that this return statement is going to execute at some point. Oh, sorry, my throat. But we're guaranteed that this is going to execute at some point. So now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.